sir? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah? Yeah. So this isn't your first can, is it? No, I yeah. think I've been here maybe 10 times. Do you remember the first time you came? I do. I do. Um, I vaguely remember. It was, uh, I think, 1987. And it was to promote something. It wasn't, it was something that was coming. But I've been here many times. I've been part of the jury uh, here. I've uh, presented films in almost every um, uh, section. section. And uh, yeah, so it's let, always different for me. Yeah. Well, let's talk about this movie, Abel yes. Farrar. Yeah. Teaming up with him again. Yep. Obviously, someone you've teamed up with. Yes. Personal story. Personal story. Um, it's a reflection of uh, what's around us. Uh, mm using people that aren't uh, normally actors, mm. using our neighborhood, using people we know. It feels almost documentarian in a way. Well, there's elements of it. Yeah. I mean, some things happen, some things are invented. Uh, it's really a reflection of what, what's sort of going on in his life, mm. and, some, and to some degree mine, because uh, we're close and we're neighbors in Rome and... and uh, but there's, there's plenty of invented things as well. Well, talk to me about that, because what, what did Abel give you as, as for a script, an outline? There How was no work? script. There yeah. was no script. Wow. It's, an improv it's really an improvised movie. Wow. He knew there were certain events. We had a very um, fluid camera, because Peter Zeitlinger, who works a lot with uh, Werner Herzog, mm -hmm. among other people, but he's really Werner's guy for many years. He's very flexible. So... It's basically there were situations and um, uh, scenarios that Abel either were close to something that happened with Abel or something he was thinking about, and we'd play those those out. Uh, they were seldom written. Mm. And we see a man getting sober. We see it's a man so getting sober. We see a man that's in crisis uh, with his uh, his partner. You see him uh, with his family. You see him fantasizing about uh, ways to get out yep. of <laughs> the problems he has. Um, what was it like watching Abel get sober? You know, uh, actually, I, I wasn't, you know, I, I, I knew him when he wasn't sober. And I worked with him uh, on a couple of movies, a couple, three movies when he wasn't sober. And then we, I saw him uh, after he was sober in Rome, and that's really when we kind of rolled up our sleeves and uh, got to collaborate in a much deeper way than we had before. How did he change? How did he change? He hasn't changed that much. <laughs> I mean, as far as working, still, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> still um, he's as energetic, as volatile, as emotional, as uh, he's he's always been a deeply sweet guy, but mm. when someone has an addiction uh there's a devotion that distracts them that's mm. all and um it's not even a moral thing it's no. uh, for from my point of view it's a practical thing that he had another god you know mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't uh the god of creativity <laughs> <laughs> but did you ever worry about him when when you of were course with when he was yeah using? yeah what do you what do you do in those circumstances do you do you ever try to sit him down and say hey it's not it's not for me i mean i don't know i don't i i mean um to be honest i don't know enough about addiction mm -hmm. okay. uh, i mean i can imagine right so let's talk about the lighthouse okay we can oh talk about the lighthouse God. yeah good unreal good uh, Robert jaw, Eggers jaw is a on, huge talent. No, but you, let's talk about your performance for <laughs> Okay, a thank it's you. Just, it's just... It's beautiful. Ah, it's good. maddening. Ah. It's dirty. It looks miserable. <laughs> and you can't take your eyes and your ears off of it. Good. Beautiful. No, I think it's it's a beautiful script. He's, uh, he's a new filmmaker, but he's quite... He's he's got there's a mastery, mm. um, and he's very precise. And he, even though it's genre filmmaking, I suppose it's also very personal filmmaking mm. because his approach to certain periods and research runs very deep. It's mm. uh, it's things he feels an affinity 
with right. and his uh, imagination and his he, he expresses itself through these very particular forms. Mm -hmm. I felt it in the witch. I when I saw the witch, I I, I thought. This guy's really interesting. And then I really sought him out and met with him, and wow. we got along very well. And I was like, please, if you find something to do together. And he found this. So uh, this, I, it was real privilege to be part of it. It's a beautiful script. Mm, it's gorgeous uh, script. The language is, is elevated. It's poetic. It's poetic it's but it's, it's also grounded. It never quite leaves. And I think there's a credibility there. Mm. Uh, you know, it's not uh, as as poetic as it is. It doesn't feel uh, it. It's not uh, superficial. It's accessible. It runs deep. It's yeah. very accessible. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the, sh the the shoot, the production. I mean, that was misery. It's. I mean, you loved you loved making the movie. I did, but no, you know, it's <laughs> it's cold. It's miserable. But cold. That's, that's, it's cold. that's kind of the point. Right. And we're there on a mission. <laughs> and that helps sometimes with uh, really extreme situations. Mm. You know, the weather tells you what you need to do. Right. And uh, you can't act, you know, that red nose <laughs> and that, <laughs> that red runny nose and that shivering and that, that bone cold oh, tiredness. It just looked like you could feel it. You could feel Feel what's going through your well, bones. good, good. I mean, because that's very, that's sort of essential for to get you into the minds of these two men that are, are trapped on this lighthouse. And Robert Pattinson. So, when did he come on board? Were you on board and then he came on board, or how did that all work? Um, I, you know, it was kind of presented as uh, the two of us at mm. the same time. Mm. I mean, uh, if I recall properly, uh, when Robert Eggers talked to me, he said, I want you to play the role of old and I, for the other role I want Rob Pattinson. Mm. So uh, it wasn't like, it was, you know, it was a personal uh, contact. There mm. wasn't like, there was a big negotiation or anything. <laughs> and yeah. how familiar were you with Rob's work? I, you know, I had seen stuff, but right. uh, I had seen some stuff, but I sort of boned up a mm. little bit. I don't always do that, but I was curious, so. And then the rehearsals. I know the other day, uh, talking about Rob thought you rehearsed for three weeks. It was only a week. No, he, <laughs> you know, I, we talked a lot about this, but you know, we're very different. Our, our approaches are very different. And listen, for each film, you have to make your own, find your own process, find your own way. So I think that's fine. Um, but we, we work very differently. <laughs> and, uh, Maybe because uh, I'm a theater actor, uh, I like rehearsal. Mm. You can't ruin spontaneity with the rehearsal. You can only frame things more precisely so you can live in a fuller way inside of the score. Mm. I think Rob feels like if, if you accomplish things in rehearsal, uh, it will blunt what you're able to come to he, he, he was like, my, my character's reserved. I don't want to show anything right, we until we get there. And I'm like, please, I, for me, it's like, let it all hang out. You know, keep on going, keep on going, and it, it'll order itself, you know? Right. And uh, part of our job is to reanimate things. But we're different. And the truth is, because our methods were different, they sort of mirrored the differences in the character. Yeah, that, so yeah. if it was a problem, I'm sure uh, Rob Eggers would have uh, uh, corrected it. But in fact, he liked the tension mm. and the difference. I mean, there was no personal animosity. Right. Uh, Rob Pattinson was a great guy, but we didn't have much contact as far as, you know, hanging out or anything right. like that. It wasn't a method thing. We worked hard and it was miserable uh, uh, weather. So... When you're free, you head for cover. <laughs> you <know? laughs> when you're making that this kind of movie in your head, is there any day where you're just like, I can't do this? This is insane. not really, not really, because it's so complete. It's your life, you know. Uh, for example, I was not going home to a posh hotel every night mm. uh, because I wanted to be near location. So where were you um, staying? In a little fishing. Uh, a little fishing cottage. That's and it was beautiful. 
and and my wife was working, so she wasn't with me, so I was solitary. And which it was make, really which works for the pardon? movie. Yeah, so you know, my outside of the actual working in the movie, my life was very simple and you know, sort of mirrored the life of the lighthouse. <laughs> it made sense. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are saying now that this movie should have been in competition. That if it was in competition, it would be up there. What do you think? I'm, I can't speak to that. <laughs> I mean, that it sounds like flattery to me. It sounds like they like the movie. Um, so I'll take that. But beyond that, um, I don't know. Also, I think, uh, you know, I'd imagine it's, it's probably a fall release. And uh, I'm sure they'd like a slow rollout, you know. And it's, uh, we're a ways from fall. So uh, um, maybe this is a kind of gentler right. uh, way to uh, start introducing people to the movie. And we're all talking about how it's going to be another Oscar nomination for you. Is it too, is it too That's soon? Good. I'll take that. <laughs> That's crazy. It's like, what, what month are we in? <laughs> I know, I know. But l listen, I mean, I'm happy to hear that talk because it really, that kind of recognition it really helps the movie. Yeah. I mean, I feel like in a way, it could be a Christmas movie. I mean, as miserable as it is, it has this Christmas No, feel. it's. Uh, I think what's surprising is... Uh, it's not a traditional horror. No. It's more like, you know, it's not, it's a little like Hitchcock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a little like Bergman. It's a little like Tarkovsky. Yep. I mean, it, but it's also got its uh, a certain amount of humor. It's not as crusty, musty, and <laughs> dusty as it is. I it's, mean, when, when, when Rob goes after you and the, the adjectives he's using to describe <laughs> you, you're almost like, I'm like, oh, my God. It's entertaining. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, I'm, then let me ask you, did he come up with that? Was that scripted? Oh, was everything it? scripted. Everything was scripted. The script was very tight. Mm. In fact, this was a film that was very designed. And when we rehearsed, it wasn't rehearsal to find our character. It was rehearsals to find the blocking, the blocking. for the camera positions. Right. It was such a it's small... usually the other way around because right. usually you find out what the scene is and then they set the camera. Right. In this case, the the design and the vision of how it should look was very strong and very developed in advance. So the actors kind of are brought into that mm. a little later than usual, which some actors would scream and kick about, but I kind of, I kind of enjoyed it because you have a strong structure there and then there are certain things that you don't have to worry about and then you it's your job to fill it and uh, keep it alive. I mean, I can't talk to you about a certain scene because like what you said at the Q&A the no other day, it's such a spoiler <laughs> and it's like I, we have to turn the mics off to talk about it but I will say it is one of the most powerful mm. uh, you know, deep, no pun intended. Yep. It's unbelievably no, uh, wonderful. This particular scene, yeah, I, I don't know how to talk about right. it. Uh, except for it cuts pretty close to the bone because yeah. you're doing something that is is very close. Well, you it's you don't have to imagine much because no, it's happening to you. It's really happening. Um, and you have to deal with that right. it's always nice to have very strong physical actions <laughs> or having strong things done to you because <laughs> <laughs> then your whole body mind and heart is yeah. <laughs> comes <laughs> comes to protect you or comes to deal with it and you don't have to invent those things if the setup is there um it just comes forward right. and, and it's a very organic thing very organic. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dirty, it's a dirty scene. <laughs> it's a dirty job, but <laughs> someone's got to do it. it. <laughs> so now could you imagine Robert Pattinson as Batman? That's the big story. Uh, listen, sure. Why not? Why not? <laughs> He's got a strong chin. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it comes down to, a strong chin. Well, that's part of it. Right, right. Can you imagine with a weak chin playing Batman? I don't think so. Um, I wanted to ask you about some of your former co-stars. Yeah. Well, one who's coming. Well, you I'm not very good about talking about other actors. Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway. We had a good time. I am really. I haven't seen the movie yet. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to it. She played my daughter. Um, <laughs> and uh, the relationship with her father is a little... A little tough, mm -hmm. so uh, but she was sweet. We we had a good time. Jason Momoa. 
Jason Momoa, big hearted guy. He was all in on Aquaman. I'm very happy that he uh, that the movie has had great success yeah. for for him and uh, and also for James Wan and uh, probably be back. <laughs> Madonna. Tell me about Madonna. 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 She was great to work with. Yeah. Um, you know, the movie received kind of a mixed. She's sort of at the height of her popularity, and I think uh, there was a s- oversaturation. Right. Um, and it was a, it was kind of an old fashioned movie, and right. because the, there was kind of a pressure to sex it up, or I, I think that people pushed it away a little bit. Mm. But to work with, she was really great. Yeah. Do you see, do you ever run into her now? And it's like you, you know, I have, I right. have, but not lately, because. Right. Uh, I think she lives in London, and and I'm not in London that much. And if I am, I'm usually pretty busy. Right. Yeah. Okay. Last movie you cried at? The last time you cried at the movie? Oh God! Is... Last night watching Tommaso. Yeah. Why? You know, when you watch a movie, sometimes you have an association to certain to the doing of it. And I'm not crying. It's, you know, I was watching this scene, uh, where the character is doing a share at an AA yeah. meeting. And that's a story that's been told to me. Mm. And then I have to tell it. And in the doing of it, in my telling, retelling of that story as the character telling it as if it's his story, I was very moved. Mm. And it's not, it's strange. So I'm watching that. uh, Yeah, I I, I just was, uh, sometimes when you watch a scene, I get the same feeling that I had when I was doing it. Mm. It's like um, Pavlovian, you know. Right. You see the 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 picture, and I start to feel exactly as I did. And wow. it was a little bit like that, and I was a little surprised, and I was kind of embarrassed. I was kind of embarrassed <laughs> crying at your own movie. Why not? You're uh, but, feeling. But that's an honest answer. Right. Last night I was watching, and during that share, and the character cries, yeah. I was crying with him because it's a moving story about someone talking about someone that's come through a really hard time and someone else saying, I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you made it through. So it's, it's a real simple, see, I get moved even thinking about it. It's a real simple expression of that human impulse to be happy for someone else's well-being. And that was moving. And what's the one movie you could watch over and over again and it never gets boring? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God, that's a movie. Oh, God. (laughs) George Burns. (laughs) I don't know about that one. (laughs) Um, Not to put down George Burns. Uh, I... Why watch the same movie? I don't like this hypothetical thing. Why watch the same movie over and over again when I don't have enough time to To watch watch the movies movies that I I want to watch? Yeah, awesome. Well, um, thank you so okay, much. Okay, yeah, Always nice talking to you. Great, great, thanks. Great.